Hey, what's going on everybody? The monthly chart. Wow, look at the candle. It is very, very bullish. Not only we have a bullish hammer candle, but we have a bullish hammer engulfing candle. That is a big deal, right? So that's very rare, very rare, especially for the monthly chart. I've, I've never seen in the entire existence, maybe this one over here, you can see you, the long wick. I guess you can say the last time this has happened was back in April of 2017. And back then we were flying to the moon. Okay. So what is a bullish hammer candle, right? Well, a bullish hammer candle is essentially something that looks like this one here. You can see how we're coming down. We whipped off the bottom, right? And then basically you had this momentum that brought you up so we went from 52 cents all the way up to a dollar 30 that's a massive bump right there from that from that uh hammer right there so if i put a measurement i mean that's over 150 percent right so hammer candles are work are are you know do very well uh especially on the larger time frames now look at this we also have a hammer candle with a very long wick here but also the body is engulfing this candle this candle is engulfing all of them right so let me ask you this which candles more bullish this candle or this candle hands down this candle why because even though this candles body is a little bit bigger it's also coming from what the top of a three wave move so you have one two three right so that three wave shape and you get that engulfing candle but look at the wick also the wick on the top is a lot larger than the wick on the bottom so you can see when it came up it got rejected and then it came down then it closed Right, so you had a pretty nasty long wick on the top of this July candle. And then in August, we came all the way back down and basically revisited the low, right? So what what happened there? What why did that happen? Well, I'm gonna get into that, but real quick, I just want to emphasize, you know, seeing this wick down here, right, and seeing this wick here is giving me a good feeling right because it doesn't want to go up it doesn't want to go down it kind of wants to go sideways why because a lot of times when it goes sideways it's trying to figure out where the pockets of liquidity are right so there was a pocket up here it grabbed it, it took it down there's a pocket down here it grabbed it it took it up so now you're essentially you're in a very tight range and i call this the judge torres range right because she came out with her ruling right here right and xrp is not a security and that was a significant thing in xrp's history and basically um ever since that ruling right where did, where was the bottom of the ruling the bottom was right here so actually the where the ruling came was the bottom of the range and the top of the range is where, right, we sold off. So it makes the range very significant, right? So this is our range here. And you can see, right, and this is going to bring me to an unfortunate part, but a lot of people were giving up on XRP saying, blah, 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 it's no good. It's, it's, it's going sideways. It's, it's a stable coin. It's this, it's that. And that's true, right? Everybody's correct. It was you know people are 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 correct right they they're feeling the brutal nature of how long it actually takes right so but the reason why it took so long is because the XRP community is the most stubborn of them all right meaning what meaning the market makers want to do what they want to shake out the weak hands they want a liquidity grab and they want to take it up or take it down. In this case, take it up. So what they do 
is they torture people who don't have the patience, right? Think about what Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in the world, says, look, you know, the stock market is a device that transfers wealth from the patient, from the impatient to the patient, right? Same thing with, with crypto. So you can see this range is a year long, right? This is a one year long range inside of a two year long range inside of a six and a half year long range. And all of these ranges are just driving people through torture, right? And only the strong survive. Only the only the the people with you know the the conviction of where it's actually going will survive, right? So I will hodl as long as it takes. This is a ride or this is a die, right? I don't care. So for most people, that's the case. A lot of the XRP community is very convinced, like they have a lot of conviction, right? So that's partly why the price has been boring and the price has been stubborn because a lot of like take for a, like a different asset for example you know it, um like a meme coin they go way up they go way down they go way way up they go way way down right because there's no sort of conviction there right it's sort of a pump and dump xrp is more stabilized right it's more stable and people don't like that people want the volatility but here's the thing, XRP, the community, right? They didn't, they didn't want to sell. They don't want to sell. Like it's going sideways, sideways. I'm not selling, I'm not selling, I'm not selling, right? And the market makers are like, okay, if the XRP community is going to be very stubborn and they're not going to sell, then I'm just going to drive it sideways, sideways for a whole year. And then we basically got to a year, right? And then look what happened. We started breaking down. People started giving up. Right. And that's when the market makers and including myself saw the opportunity and capitalized on this uh, breakdown. Right. Because a lot of people thought, OK, we're ranging sideways and it's so boring. XRP is never going to break out. And now all of a sudden now we're going down. Right. So now I quit. Now I'm definitely out. Right. But that was the best time to actually buy. So you can see right here, 39 point, uh, actually 39.2, right? So 39 cents. So I was able to get it right at about, right about there. So uh, I got a pretty good price on that. And what I was doing is I was waiting for what? I was waiting for the three wave pullback. So when I go to the weekly chart, you can see what I'm talking about here, right? This whole thing was a three wave shape. Boom, 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 right? And that's the thing. Just how like this was, right? This was actually five. But look, the big engulfing candle, the candle we just saw was coming at the end of the wave, right? This candle is coming or this three wave shape is coming where? At the end of the wave. Uh, uh, at the bottom of the wave, right? So that's the big difference, right? And as soon as we broke this line, right? This was what? Also, why cough accumulation? So we were developing, right? A spring in here that a lot of people didn't see, right? Even guys that are very, very good at reading charts, even they said, I don't like XRP, Right. Remember, I just did a video about Alessio Rastani and his guy, Charlie, very, very successful traders and not just them, but a lot of other people. They said it looks rubbish. I don't know. He's from he's from the UK. And he's like, oh, yes, uh, it, it looks a little bit rubbish for me. It's not one that I would consider. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, anyway, I, I'm horrible. <laughs> uh, stop it. Stop it. OK, um, so, yeah, you know, and. For me, I couldn't understand why they felt that like that because uh, I looked at it pretty pretty bullishly, right? But a lot of people looked at it bearishly because, and rightfully so, it, it looks kind of, 
you know, it's just kind of doing this and kind of waddling around. It it doesn't look so it doesn't look so good, right? It kind of looks like it's just lackluster. But if you look closely, you can start to see exactly what I'm talking about. And just bef before I get there, I just wanted to say real quick here that this Wyckoff structure, right, was one thing that they totally missed. Um, but another thing, right, is the three-wave shape that we saw here. This is a three-wave shape. And this right here was a liquidity grab. And here's another thing. We also had five waves. One, two, three, four, five. We had a five-wave move here. We have the end of the sea leg. We have the end of the Wyckoff spring. We have the break below the range, right? The liquidity grab. And that's where people said, okay, I'm out. That was the final flush. It's all about the market maker shaking out the weak hands. The reason why XRP took so long to shake out all the weak hands is because the XRP community is one of the strongest, most convinced, stubborn communities out there, right? You cannot pry with a crowbar away, uh, a to XRP tokens away from XRP holders. They will, they will hold on to XRP until they're dead, right? You cannot, it, it's just not gonna happen, right? So, so you know, I'll, there's so many of them, right? So what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, okay, we're the strong people like me and you, we're not ever selling our XRP, especially not at 62 cents, not even, there's no circumstance where that happens. So we're gonna leave those guys alone, right? We're, we know they're not gonna sell. So we know, right, because what do the market makers want? What are, what are the guys with millions and millions of dollars? They want cheap prices. If they can push XRP down to 10 cents, they would do it. If they would push it down, and you know, 17, 20 cents, right, they would do it. Why? Because they can buy, they can buy truckloads worth because they know the future value of it is going to be insane. So they're trying to capitalize on this wild, wild west situation where we have no regulation, Right, because regulation, what even the guys who have millions of dollars with the crypto who it's in their best interest for regulation don't want regulation. Why? Because regulation does what it pushes in what utility, and what will utility do? It will push prices way up, but they don't want the prices to go up. Why? Because they want to spend as much time as they can stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking. Because by the time they, you know, they're, they're, they're telling, you know, the SEC, uh, the, the corruption there, right, the, the, the Congress, they don't want regulation because it competes with the banks, DeFi, things like that. But uh, even the big traders, like I said, don't want it because then it will push in utility, which will then push in more higher prices. They do eventually want utility. They do eventually want higher prices, but they don't want it until they've stuck their bag so much that they have coins popping out of their ears, right? So, um, you know, so that's what they so that's what they did here. I'm trying to explain it in a story, right? And that's why we see the price the way it is, right? We're going down, we're going up, we're going down, we're going up, we're going down. Okay, now we're breaking down, psych, see you later, right? And essentially, uh, you know, like I said, the, the XRP community is so stubborn, but you also have the weak links, right? There's, there's always going to be weak links in every community. And those people sold right there. And that's where the supply got rushed in and that's where we absorbed that supply and we absorbed it so fast that we had this massive impulse that we see here down here at 39 cents by the way where's 39.2 let me let me put my right about there ah close enough right so that's my entry literally basically the bottom right I now I did did I know it was going to be the bottom? No. A lot of it has to do with sort of intuition alongside skill, seeing the wave structure and a, and a lot of luck, 
right? It takes a lot of luck too, because this thing could have totally just broken down, right? It could have been a one, two, one, two, and we could have went and crashed, right? I mean, you know, you just don't know, but I had to stick with my guns. I had to have the conviction and, and guess what? When I bought down here, it was not a good feeling. I did not feel good at all. It's not supposed to feel good. If you buy crypto and you feel good about it, you're doing it wrong, right? Because look at all the people who bought this. Look what happened. They got screwed because then it came all the way back down. Everybody who bought the SEC or the, um, the judge ruling got spanked, right? They got punished here unfortunately right so you know you want to buy when it's depressing and and sad and and everybody's giving up you want to buy when there's bad news the worse news the better right if you know whatever bad news comes out you know that's typically going to happen at bottoms right when you start getting big candles up and now you start getting good news that's when you want to be like okay i'm just going to wait and see what happens so that's essentially the story here. That's why it took so long because, again, the market makers are like, okay, you know, like let's take a let's look at a, a different chart like maybe ADA. You could see ADA is more linear, right? There's no ranging. There's no, you know, it, it, it's 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 straight up. It's straight down. And now you have this three way, you know, the waves are defined. They have a lot of definition in the waves where XRP is kind of like, you know, it's kind of going sideways. It's just kind of, it's basically like getting ready to do something. And we just don't know what it is, right? Going back to what Charlie said, it's rubbish. And he's right, it is rubbish. But if you look very, 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 very closely, you can see that it's actually beautiful. Um, so let me go back, right? And so we, you know, we got all that taken care of. Now we, you know, again, that's why it was all about people on X, Twitter, whatever. They said, you know, XRP is this, XRP is that. It's trash. It's a stable coin. It's going to zero. Blah blah blah. And even though all that sentiment, we still didn't break down. But eventually, we broke down, and that's. That's what the market makers wanted. That's what we needed. Because we could have easily gotten the three-wave shape like this. A, B, C. We were supposed to get it here, but we didn't get it. Why? Because the XRP community is to blame, right? People say, why does the XRP price don't do anything? Why is it sideways? Why is it boring? Why is it this? Why is it that? Because of you, because of me, because of our relentlessness. We do not want to sell, right? Like a meme coin, Again, they go way up, they come way down, or, or whatever coin goes up, it goes down, right? Um, but, uh, you know, XRP, it kind of stays in a very tight range. It doesn't want to move, right? It, 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 because, again, they're trying to shake out the weak hands, but they're so stubborn, they don't want to sell, so it takes a long time, day after day after day, week after week, right? It took a whole year for them to finally say, okay, I give up, right? So we had to wait because they are, because we're all stubborn, right? We don't want to sell. So, and you can see when it broke down, it actually broke down just a little bit. It could have actually came way down here, right? Or I would have liked to see one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, and then go up. But we had to go through this, we had to come here, we had to come back down, we had to do a triangle, then break down, right? All because nobody wanted to sell. But eventually, you wear them down and you torture them enough, they're eventually going to sell. And that's what we saw. We saw selling, right? So now, right, when we go back to everyone who's saying it's bearish, right, saying that it looks like rubbish, you can see right here. By the way, I love Al Alessio Rustani. I'm not knocking him, but I'm just using him as an example, right? He's a really great trader, really great guy. Definitely recommend subscribing to him. Um, you know, but here's, look at this. A month ago, he said XRP is in trouble, 
Here's why. And I had a lot of friends and people who, who are kind of poking, making fun of me, looking, ha ha, look at Alessio saying it's in trouble, right? And I'm, and I'm watching this video, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever you say, right? Um, so, you know, uh, what other one did he put out? Okay, here. And then a little while later, he put out, just two weeks ago, he put a video out, right? And, you know, talked about it. And then I made a video responding to him, right? And this was just recently, maybe, actually, actually, no, it was actually two weeks ago, actually, when he made the video. But then, all of a sudden, XRP just kept going up and up and up and up and up, right? And then he put a video out. He had to put a video that has XRP bottom. Well, wait a minute. A month ago, you said it's in trouble. Now you're saying it's bottomed, right? Because it's oftentimes, a lot of people say the, 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 the chart is in trouble, right? When, it's all, when, when, when you should have said it was in trouble at the top. But now it's too late because people watch the video. They say, oh, it's in trouble coming from a guy who has 387,000 subscribers. People are going to take him seriously and they're going to believe and they're going to sell. XRP is in trouble. I just watched the video. I'm going to sell because the expert said that it's in trouble. But that was actually the worst time to sell. That was the worst time. You don't want to sell when it's already down and bloody and messed up. You want to, you know, if you're going to sell, that's fine. But wait for a three-wave retracement and then sell, okay? So these are things that I talk about in my video. But uh, so, you know, here's them. And, and here's, and you know, it was starting to pump actually, right? So he actually said XRP's in trouble down here, right? And I don't understand why because that was a five-wave move. That was also a Wyckoff liquidity grab. And then we also had a big spring out of here, but that spring never occurred, yeah, right? But listen. Yeah, uh, I mean, just to mention, XRP dropped to, uh, what was that low that it dropped down to recently? So what's your view overall on this? I mean, I should say that- It looks it hasn't rubbish. <gasps> it looks rubbish. <laughs> That's my technical I, view. <laughs> um, it, I should yeah, say that yeah. we got a lot of people who like completely in love with XRP, so okay. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they'll love that that, that sentiment. I'm looking at it <laughs> as a neutral. Well, it's two things. I'm looking at it yeah. as a neutral, so I don't care. Sure, yeah, exactly. I have no vested interest in it. Sure. Um, I don't care. Uh, and I and also I'm only looking at it from a technical perspective. So yeah. a lot of your your followers will be looking at it because they understand a lot more of what's going on with XRP itself from a fundamental perspective. So. And I, he's he's absolutely right. He's absolutely 100% right. Um, but for me, even if I'm not looking at it through a fundamental perspective, we're, we're going to get into the technical aspect in it as well. But essentially, they said it looked rubbish. They didn't like it, right? Alessio put a video out a month ago saying it's in trouble, right? Then two weeks ago, right? Maybe they're right. Maybe they're still correct, right? Maybe, maybe XRP just comes up to where it is now and then it starts to go all the way back down below 40 cents they could be right and i could i could look like a total fool right maybe right but what are we looking at right now um from from xrp We're, we got a massive bullish hammer candle right and then also right when you look at the market uh or when you look at the chart right i'm trying to figure out how in the heck did it explode the last time, right? So what was the environment needed for XRP to get an explosion? So when I zoom out, I mean, it's pretty much clear as day um, what we're looking at here. I mean, I was talking about this liquidity grab for as long as I can remember. And I basically was saying, look, in my videos, even going back um, January and, and, and even December of, of last year saying there can be a big liquidity grab. And it took its time. It took a long time. But it, let me actually go up a little bit more. There we go. And you can see how long it actually took. Um, right? Because we weren't sure right when we were in here we were talking about it a lot and we weren't sure if the liquidity graph happened already because we did get this big drop down here 
right? And you can see the wick. So we had that liquidity grab and then we closed back in, but then it actually came all the way back down and closed again below it. So um, that was actually the real liquidity grab. So you can see very, very clearly, somebody send this chart to Alessio here. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have a rise, right? We have a rise, we have a crash, we have a crash, we have a retracement, we have a retracement. We come down into reaccumulation. We come down into reaccumulation. And then we go sideways. And then we blast off, right? The same thing here. So we're coming down. We're hitting support. Boom, boom, boom. Liquidity grab. Moonshot. Same thing here, right? We're coming down, right? We're coming back up. We're bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Liquidity grab. What happens next? Explosion, right? Is that what's going to happen? Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. Look, at nothing is ever, ever guaranteed. All we can do is look at things and say, yeah, it looks good, right? It, it, it's supposed to match up that way, right? But um, what are some other things that can give us confluence to say, you know what? Is there anything else that tells us... Um, that the bottom is in and also that we're on our way. Well, of course there is, which is what? Which is the fractal, right? So if I take the fractal and let's just look at it, right? From a time perspective here. So I'm gonna take the top of this fractal and I'm sure you've already seen this before, but I'm, I'm showing it for a reason here. So, you know, when I take the top and I match it up exactly right to where it needs to be right so and i put it right about there you know you can see from a time perspective we should be on our way to the upside right so if that occurs maybe it does maybe it doesn't so um but anyways let's let's take a look closely here at sort of this wave structure so if i just bring this up. And by the way, this was the spring, right? So we're comparing the spring to this spring. And we can see something in, in very, very similar. Now, just disregard the, the crazy wick there, but you can see, right, you kind of have this divergence in here, kind of come down, go sideways, come down, go sideways, right? Then we break down, then we break down. I mean, we were tracking all of this. And then you kind of swoop down, you kind of swoop down, right? And then you have one, two, three, four, five, right? So that is why I went long. That is why I decided, you know, if I go back in time, I didn't realize it was going to be this fast. I thought, because you can see, right, the fractal in here, you could see how long it kind of hanged out down here. It went up, it came back down. I thought it was going to have at least maybe two or three opportunities. But I only had one opportunity because it happened so fast. And that's another reason why things are so bullish because it didn't give me the time, right? Because normally what we wanted to see, right? The price come down, right? Price comes down and then it shoots up, right? And you buy here, perfect. But a lot of times it comes back down like it does here. It comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down right? Comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. And I thought I could buy here and buy here and buy here. And I thought I can get all these entries, but it actually just was like, whoop, straight shot out of there, had no way I can get in. So that was the issue, right? I'm still waiting for a wave two. If this is a wave one, and we're going to get into the small time frames. by the way, hit that like button. If you like XRP, and you want it to go to the moon, like I do, hit the like button. And uh, maybe your wildest dreams will come true here. And not just for XRP, right? If XRP moonshots, then what do you think the rest of the market's going to do? Just sit there and watch it go? No, it's going to moonshot too. So, um, you know, I think it's important to study um, a the top 10 asset, right? By the way, XRP is the only coin other than Bitcoin and Ethereum, to be in the top 10 since the beginning of time, right? So ever since XRP was created, it was has been in the top 10. I believe that's true. 
and it's it's you know it's been an amazing um, performer, right? So it's only had one bull cycle, and uh, it's still been in the top ten, right? And that's another reason why I, I think XRP is so unbelievably strong because again, you don't measure a coin's strength through its strongest point you measure it through its weakest times right for example if i take xyz coin and it went on a nice bull run people like it but then it got hit with a lawsuit then exchanges started uh, delisting then they you know they started getting sued and sued and sued right and then they lost you know things right what would happen that coin would be killed right but xrp held the top 10 title right despite not going into a bull run every coin went all the way into a bull run ada maddox solana bitcoin ethereum they all went and broke out into new all-time highs and they were all in the top 10 and they all went together right xrp did not so if XRP didn't participate in the bull run, all the coins are up here, XRP's down here, then how the heck did it still stay in the top 10? How? Because that shows strength, right? And then also it got delisted, or actually it got sued by the SEC, and it still held the top 10. It got delisted by Coinbase, Kraken, I think a lot of other ones, and it still held the top 10. So it didn't go on a bull run, it got sued, it got delisted, and it still held the top 10 title. I mean, that, and everyone's saying, oh, it's trash, it's weak, it's this, it's that. I'm saying here, I'm sitting here going, no, this is like the best thing in the world because, you know, no matter how hard you punch them in the face, they still get right back up, right? I kind of compare XRP to Trump. In a, in a weird way because nobody's been persecuted and, and looked at with a magnifying glass, vetted up and down like XRP. Nobody's gotten beat up more than XRP, right? So, um, and it's still fighting and it's still here today. So I don't see why, any reason why, you know, Trump would, wouldn't like XRP. By the way, it's the number one American blockchain in the world, in the United States. So, um, uh, you know, Bitcoin isn't USA based, right? It's, it's global and so is XRP, but the founders, the foundation of it is American. Ethereum is not, Tether is not, I don't think, right? And it's a stable coin anyway. Binance coin is not, right? So Ripple, is the number one American blockchain company in the world. Who are you gonna bet on, right? If Trump is saying America first, we gotta keep it in America, 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 right? Who's the number one American blockchain? Ripple. It, it is, it, it, I mean, it is, right? So, you know, and it's got the best chart, I think, because, you know, most coins, guys, this is another reason why it's so important. Most coins, they went up into their bull cycle, right? Then they came down, and then they're doing this, and now they're kind of breaking out a little bit. Okay, so which coin would you rather have? A coin that's way the hell up here or way down here? I don't know about you, but I would have it way down here because, again, most of them are way up here. So... XRP has a lot more percentage potential to get to, right? So that's just another reason why it's so incredibly bullish, in my opinion. So, um, by the way, breaking news. The Lucid SAR is about to be broken any minute here. I mean, we came up very, very close. We, we missed it just by a little hair, by, a, you know, not that much. Right. So maybe in another week, we're going to break that 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 star. Right. And we want to break it um, so that we can continue the momentum to the upside. Right. So, you know, you can see when the stars are above, it's bearish. When it's below, it's 
bullish, right? Um, so that indicator is looking really good. Let's look at the EMA ribbon. Look at the EMA ribbon. That's what I want to see. I want to see it loose in here. Then I want to see it get tight, 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 and then even tighter, right? You can see it's like a snake. It's coiling around. It's coiling around the ribbon, the band, right? So, um, you know, when that happens, it's, it's, it's like a bow constrictor. It's, it's basically constricting it so tightly, right? And when it's like, you know, you have a balloon and you're just squeezing it, eventually it's going to pop. It's going to pop to the upside or it could pop to the downside too, right? So uh, that's the EMA ribbon looking really good. Let's, let's take a look at some other indicators here. Let's go to the TD sequential. Um, actually, let's go to the four day. Look at that, guys. We had a beautiful four day nine we talked about. This is another reason why I went long. This is another reason why I didn't understand he said it looked bearish. Not just Alessio, but many other people, right? Because first of all, what are the rules? The rules are we want five waves. We got it. We want divergence. We got it. We want the dojis. We got it. We want the hammers. We got it. We want the nines. We got it. We got the liquidity grab. We got it. We want the, we got the spring. We got it. I mean, we have everything. So why would he say it's bearish? I don't know. I don't understand it. So uh, anyway. We, the reason why I like the four day nine is because it's been spot on, right? So let me take this out of there so we can focus on the nine. You can see perfectly. We had a three wave shape. We landed on a nine. And during the nine, we went sideways. You can see we were going sideways in here. Then we exploded to the upside. Then we had a nine cell. This nine cell could have been a pullback and a continuation but it was actually a reversal, right? We reversed and we came down, boom, boom, boom. And we landed on the green dots. Maybe that was enough. We're starting to flatten out. It's looking pretty good, but nope, this wasn't sufficient enough. So we came back down and look at that. We landed on another nine and it came down in a creek. One, two, three, four, five, nine. You can see the wicks here. And we talked all about this on the channel for a lot of, uh, we, you know, I made more videos about XRP sort of focused on XRP than I have in a long time over the last couple of weeks here because of how significant I believe this is, right? So right now we're on a five. Um, it's typical for the four and the five to kind of be flat. And uh, you can see over here, Right, we're coming down one, two, three, but look at the four and the five, it's kind of flattening out a little bit and then it picks up momentum again. So um, we'll see if we can get back to a nine. Um, you know, what, what's going on here? And that's, that's the small time frame stuff. It doesn't really matter too much over the overall picture, right? But we're gonna jump into the small time frame as well. So. Um, I just wanted to point out, I mean, this nine was very powerful. And then we also had it on the three day chart, right? It wasn't perfected. It wasn't nearly as good, but we got it. And the five day chart, we actually missed it by two candles, which isn't much of a big deal. So, um, yeah, so let's keep moving forward here. By the way, the only way possible that XRP can remain bullish is for Bitcoin to get that fifth wave. If Bitcoin doesn't show up to the party, there's just really no chance for it to sustain above a, an all-time high price, right? I mean, obviously, if Bitcoin starts to dump for whatever reason, right, things turn around, but then let's say we got a bullish lawsuit, it could pump up to here. It could get pretty pumpy, right? But as far, but I don't want pretty pumpy. I want massive pumps, right? I want to see, you know, I've been buying this thing since, 
you know, I, I started investing in crypto and especially Bitcoin in 2017. I didn't really get into XRP because I was just like everybody else. I thought it was a banker coin. It was centralized. It was this. It was that. But I didn't fully understand um, the utility part of it. Right. So for me, I was investing in XRP, you know, starting in about, I would say, the summer of 2019 in here. And then all through here, all through here. And then I stopped. I started again through here because I thought maybe this could be a three wave move. Uh, a, B, C didn't work out. I started accumulating a lot in here. Um, and I've just been accumulating ever since. So I've been, you know, this is a, this is my biggest investment. And, uh, so I do have a bias, right? I have a bullish bias, but I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say something I don't believe, right? Because if I don't believe it, my money wouldn't be in it. Right. I can easily just sell my XRP at a profit because most of everything I bought was below 50 cents. So I can sell it all and go to another coin if I wanted to. But I'm not. I'm holding tight. Why? Because I believe XRP's day is to, I'm not going to just wait all that time for nothing. Right. So this area right here is sort of the the area that needs to break, obviously, right? But if we, if, uh, like I said, if Bitcoin's bearish and we have a lawsuit that ends and we come up here and it looks really good, I'm still not going to sell, right? Because I want to see it. I want to see Bitcoin go. I want to see the rest of the market go. And I want to see XRP break out, backtest, and continue to go, right? So if we, if we start getting something like this, this is where I would consider selling. Right. And or even like Trump said, never sell your Bitcoin, never sell your crypto. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm here to make money. I'm not here to hold a coin forever. Right. I will always hold crypto, but uh, I got to get paid. Right. I got to get paid. I got to have cash in my hand, even though cash is dying. Right. I still got to have it in my hand. Right. And then I can diversify it into other things if I wanted to. And that'll be at a later stage in this video. So what else can we find here? Well, simply enough, all you got to do is just draw a downward resistance line right here. And I'm going to actually cut through a little bit of the candles here because I want to touch this one, this one, and this one. And I will sacrifice going through a little bit of there. But essentially, once we break that downward resistance line, Right, I can actually put it up a little bit. As long as it's not going through the bodies, it's okay. Um, but yeah, so that price area would be, you know, um, about 75. It's really this, this area here, so about 75 cents. Um, so that would be the, the, the very key area to break. Also, another indicator, we're back above... And I, I haven't, I don't know why I haven't talked about this, but we are back above the bull market support band, right? And uh, we haven't tested it yet either. So that's another thing as well. You know, we, we're back above the bull market support band. Let's see um, if we can stay above it, right? Um, as far as the small time frame stuff goes, right? Is this a fourth wave? And we're gonna get a flat, right? We'll, we'll we'll jump into that stuff. Actually, let's just get into it right now. So essentially, the small time frames. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, and then this is A. This whole thing is B, and now we're gonna get C and come down and retest the bull market support band. Then go. That's my favorite idea. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. I don't. I mean, I, you know, I'm looking at this as a A, B, C. I want to see a correction here, right? It hasn't really been correcting. It, again, 
The XRP community is relentless. They're stubborn. They don't want to sell, right? So what happens? That's why XRP has a long... That's why it's always so long. Because nobody wants to sell, right? That's why it's so bullish. Nobody wants to sell. Look how long it's been going sideways. Look at that. Just sideways, sideways, sideways. Because nobody wants to sell. And then also nobody wants to buy because they're waiting for a pullback. But pullbacks don't come because nobody wants to sell, right? But eventually it goes sideways long, 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 long time. And then it finally people give up. Then it, then it drops, has the three wave shape. Then it goes, right? So uh, anyways, let's uh, jump into a few ideas here. So the first idea, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, and then we get C, then we go. The other idea is to say that this is one, two, um, three, four, five, and actually no. One, two, all of this is three, this is four, this is a truncated fifth, right? And now we have an ABC in here. But it's not finished yet, right? It's not finished yet, then we go. Um, the other idea is to say that, you know what, the correction's over. This was our wave two, and that's all we got. One, two, three, four, five. And this is, that's wave one. This is wave two. And this is a one, two, three, four, five, a diagonal of wave one of three. Right? And this is wave two. And now we're about to go up into wave three of three, which is the big, big wave, right? So is that what's happening here? Maybe. Right? And that's another idea. And then another idea, it's, it's, it's a little bit challenging because of the way it's shaped. It's, it's not giving me any directional bias. Now, it kind of looks like you got a cup and you got a handle. I mean, simple enough, right? You got a cup and handle. Another thing is you got this beautiful potential ascending triangle. That looks very bullish, right? So um, the measured move of that would be approximately, you know, about 75 cents. And that's exactly where we need to be. We need to get back to that 75 cent area. So there's the ascending triangle there for you. That's another idea. All of them are bullish, right? The other idea is um, that, you know, the, 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 the running flat is complete. So we have A, B, and this is C, and that's all we got. This was a little tiny C leg, right? And then we went flat, build a base, and now this is the breakout. We get a three-way pullback, and then we go literally to the moon. So this could be an ABC running flat, and that's all you can get. Or this is part of a B wave, and we still need the C leg for the flat. To go up now the flat can be running it could be expanding or it could be a regular so here here or here right but all of all of which i think should stay hopefully above the bull market support band right you can see we're holding it you know we're resisting it we we really need to stay if we break above the bull market support band we need to stay above it Right? No more going back below it because it's just going to take a lot more time. You can see, right? Right over here, we broke above it. We back tested it. We back tested it again, and that led to this big move, right? But if I can compare, maybe we're in something similar to this wave over here something like that and you can see how long that took to correct you can see exactly right? I'm not saying this is this is the case but you can see what I mean you know the wave you have this little area here right it looks corrective is what I'm saying so we'll we'll, we'll just have to give it time and 
let it see. There's a lot of anticipation about the lawsuit and things like that. When you get too many people expecting something at a certain time, it never happens. So, you know, all these articles, they need to just stop with this speculation. Just let it come when it comes. We don't know when it's going to come. Brad Garlinghouse said sometime this summer. And he said the last day of summer is my birthday, September 21st. So, will we get a, a judgment by then? I sure hope so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, we have some kind of three-way move here. That back test the bull market support band. This would be a really good spot to, to buy and then go up. That's why you got to click subscribe because are you going to, you know, this is not financial advice, but are you going to know for sure um, when to pick your spots? I mean, you really can't go wrong. Anything under anything under this range really is a good buy, in my opinion. But uh, if you want the best bang for your dollar, you know, it's, it's going to come on a, on a three-way pullback. Now, that being said, this might not be finished yet. Right, because when you look at it from a little bit of a higher standpoint, you got a one, two, all of this is three, and this could be one, two, and now we're getting three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, all of that's five. And then we get the big ABC pullback, right? We start rounding this up, and then we go, right? We flag out for a wave two. So maybe we have to level up and then go into a wave two. Right, so maybe the wave two is not even here yet. That's the whole thing, right? Um, so we're just gonna have to wait and see about that. So when we look at it from a retracement perspective, right? Where are we on the retracement? We're right in the golden pocket between the 618 and the 50, right? So this is a critical area. I mean, you can see all the price, there's a lot of resistance in here, right? So cracking through that is going to open the floodgates, I think. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Now, if I just go back to the most recent correction we had right there, you can see we're actually in the, we broken above the 702, and we're sort of in between that and the 786. So, I mean, we're very bullish from this wave, from this actual retracement wave here. Um, so yeah, but I'll be a little bit more conservative and I'll just say, I want to, I want us to get through 67 cents. If put it this way, if we can close a weekly or two week chart above, um, 67 cents above this high here, I think we have an easy shot to, uh, you know, 78 plus. And, uh, you know, then we're going to be setting our targets to a dollar 68, a dollar 81, the, the 1618. Um, but yeah, I, I think the big areas will be about that 90 cent to a dollar, uh, really between a dollar 10 and a dollar 30. So, Crack a dollar thirty. I think we're very much on our way. You can see the stochastic RSI in the monthly still has a lot of momentum to the upside. You can see the RSI in the monthly is basically in the in the in the in the mean, right in the middle here. So it's got a lot of room. Um, all looking good. Volume. We haven't had any big volume spikes, which is good, right? And you can say, well, why is that good? Because if you get a big volume spike, that's usually the end of the move, right? A lot of people, that's the beginning of the move. No, that's the end of the move. So you can see right in here, we had a big volume spike. Um, but that actually was the bottom of this wave here, right? So XRP hasn't had actually a lot of volume. Um you know, relative to where it's been. Um, but it actually is one of the coins that has the most volume, interestingly. So let's get rid of that. Let's let's look at, you can see the Ichimoku cloud, 
right? We're, we're starting to pierce up into that red cloud. This is exactly what we wanted to see. And uh, I want to see this this flag here, or this cloud here start to cross over and flip green again. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're sort of holding here, right? And we, we basically want to break, we want to get out of that, right? And we want this to flip green. That's what we want. And I think we're on our way there. Um, but you know, we, we still might need that wave too, right? So things can start getting bearish here. So if I put the retracement here and let's say the wave's done, we can all we can go all we're at 62 cents guys we can go all the way back down to 46 cents let me make sure that's right no that's not right okay i'm sorry 47 we can go all we can go down all the way down to 47 cents and still be bullish so imagine that imagine you know we're sitting at 62 63 cents everything's bullish and then we start going down to 55 oh no and then we go to 50. Oh, what's going on? And then we go to 47, right? Everybody's going to be very bearish. But that could be actually a wave one and a wave two. We could still get something huge like that, right? So as long as we stay above 47 cents, we're, we're still bullish. Just remember that. So we still we got a lot of wiggle room between now and 47. All right, the weekly Bollinger Band. You can see we are getting back to the top of the the Bollinger Band here. Um, you know, things are tightening up, that's for sure. Um, you can see, actually, if I go down, uh, maybe uh, let's let's look at a higher time frame here. There we go. The the monthly chart. You can see how things are getting squeezed it's things are getting squeezed in here pretty tightly and we haven't had anything like that since back over here you could see that same thing and which led to this massive rally right so everything's kind of lining up rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways blast off tight bollinger band rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways tight bollinger band blast off so looking good on the Bollinger Bands. All right, let's talk about targets now. I mean, there's still a lot of other indicators I can go through, but let's talk about targets. The first target that you would even think about selling is at least $5. You gotta go at least $5, right? Maybe, maybe $4.25 four dollars and fifty cents but really this 1618 at five dollars and thirty cents that would be the first target then you know um between seven and eight dollars right really and then ten to eleven dollars and if we get the four point two three six that would be at thirteen dollars now is there any situation scenario where we can go even higher than that yes and that would be um, my highest target that I have for XRP that I think is possible is about $26, $27. So let's see. Um, yeah, $26. So the, the 1618 on log scale, which would bring us right here. So can we hit $26.37? I mean, it's gonna be a massive market cap. So if we look at that on market cap, that would actually be about $900 billion. So it's possible. I mean, if we get a $900 billion market cap, and I think it's very possible, we would look at um, a $26 XRP. So give us a $26 XRP, and that'll be a $900 billion market. I think it's possible, especially for XRP. So that'll be, that'll do it for this video. Now, is there anything else? Well, if we, you know, again, I'm looking at this as one, two, three, four, and now, or actually one, two, three, 
four, five, right? So is there anything bearish? It could actually be very bearish, right? Maybe Alessio is right. And this is one, two, three, four with a truncated fifth. And this is A, this is B, we still need C. So A, B, C, and then we go. That could totally happen. That could totally happen. Um, if, if, if the judgment goes very bad, maybe something like that happens. But I think ultimately it's going to be very, very, very bullish, especially since Trump's going to win. I'm pretty confident that he's going to win. Um, I think they might try to steal it. They, you know, they might even announce on election night, yeah, you know, a Kamala won, but it was all a hoax, right? It was all, they cheated, right? But it's going to be so overwhelming that they can't even cheat. Um, so that'll do it for, for XRP. And just a few more basic common things here. Right? Again, the big star of today's show is this monthly hammer candle. Remember, this is a monthly, this is a monthly um, bullish hammer engulfing candle or bullish engulfing hammer candle, which whichever you prefer, right? So if we start to, you know, get up here, right? We start to curl up, it's gonna look like a massive cup and a massive handle, right? So it's gonna look pretty good. So if I actually take a measure move of where that could land us, that's about 570, 550 billion dollars which actually puts us slightly above the 1.414. So when we look at that, what does that equate to in price? Um, that's approximately the 1.41, about, yeah. So maybe $14, $15 there for XRP. Um, so other than that, um what 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 i'm looking for again real very very fast is for this to you know if this is going to break out it could still be a three-wave shape like this and we could still come down and get a running flat a b c go right so if we start to come down now it, i still have that three-wave shape and it could still be another correction like that Right. But if this is the start of a wave one and a wave two, then we should get so extended that that this is not even the case anymore where we have one, two, three, four and then five. Right. So definitely interesting times. Uh, again, the monthly candle is going to end um, what tomorrow. So it's going to be pretty, pretty significant. Um, so when we look at the monthly real quick fast, is there anything where we have to come back and retrace? Um, maybe this wick right here, right at 56 cents, you can see, and that's kind of where I would have my buy or at least a dollar cost average. So let's say the, the, the candle closes here. And then we sort of wick down to about right there, right? And then you can see the candle, right? You can see the, the wick there. So uh, yeah, I think somewhere in here would be a good idea. But uh, I'll probably get another video out, uh, talk about Bitcoin, the monthly chart. I mean, that's a nice, looks pretty good, like a bullish hammer candle. It's got a nice long wick there. It's looking pretty decent. Anything on the small time frames? Um, yeah, we got our pullback, and I'll probably have to upload another video. But yeah, we got our pullback here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. It could be A, it could be B, it could be C. And this is what I've been thinking here: some kind of flat. So maybe it's an expanded flat. We'll 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 talk about it. But uh, anyways, that'll do it for this video. Thank you, XRP community, and uh, I will catch you guys. Let me just say one thing. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. It really helps the algo out. I mean, if you don't even want to say anything, just put a number two or put a one or just say XRP. 
<laughs> it all it all helps out. Anyways, guys, thank you, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.